Hey everyone. Hello class. My name is Frey Ryzen, and as you guys know, I am a magical teacher. Now, as for what kind of magic I do, well, it's actually a funny story. I am not going to bore you with the details. I'm not going to go into super, super, super in-depth mode. Uh, instead, I'd like to teach you about different aspects, little by little. And then afterwards, we'll go on a little trip, go on a little mission um, to allow you to explore those, those aspects. So, first things first, what kind of magic do I teach? Well, here in the magical realm, there exists two energies. And this, are you ready? Because this is going to test your guys' knowledge of everything around you. Um, and keep in mind, um, you guys actually know a lot more than you think about magic and how magic works. Because magic in itself is simply a form of science that we can't really understand. Now, let me ask you this. Any of you physics, physics people around? Do you guys know what the four fundamental, four fundamental um, forces of the universe is? Because it'll come in handy. I will also say, everyone here has watched some form of anime in the past. And I'm just going to put a little disclaimer in there and say that's going to help you with this adventure. No idea? No worries. No worries. Gravity, electromagnetism, strong, weak and strong nuclear force. Thank you very much, Chase. These are the three, these are the four fundamental forces of the universe. Uh, in the magical realm, uh, we refer to these as the products of ten. And basically by m m ten is the building blocks of these fundamental forces. By harnessing 10, we can alter what are called scientific constants. Cool. That's the boring parts done. If you can harness 10, you can change how strong gravity is, how long electromagnetism is, how strong atoms are pulling themselves together. Cool, cool, cool. Bam, bam, bam. That's done. Secondly, there is only one known energy which can manipulate 10. This is known as chi. It's a semi-sentient energy that we can tap into. Now, the reason I tell you this is because Chi is going to help you today. Uh, as you scan items and as you look around um, in the adventure, you can use Chi and Chi will communicate with you. This is Big Brain super excited. <laughs> I have been studying this for over 10 years. 10 years, your time. So if you imagine 10 years, it kind of flows a bit different over here. <laughs> So basically, what I'm trying to say is, lean into the chi, trust the chi. It's going to try to help you and it's going to do its best to help you. I'm going to be communicating with you guys as well, but unfortunately I have things to attend and I have uh, some boring teacher paperwork to fill out in the background. Suddenly, a man walks into the room and hands Frey. A small letter. And Frey opens the letter slowly. And he opens it. Uh, he pulls out the letter. And begins to read. Change plans, students. We have a mission for you today. Nothing big, nothing major. A man has lost his cat. No, not in Lego City. But it seems that we've gotten a request. Jeremy, Jeremy Pickett, a man living at the edge of town. He seems to, he seems to have requested for many, many, it's quite a while now, actually, um, for people to help find his lost cat. And I know you're looking at me, you're looking at me like, whoa, we're matching students. What are we doing looking for a lost cat? But something tells me there's a lot more, a lot more to this mystery than, um, that meets the eye. Call it teacher's intuition. 
let me explain how this works. Let me just move, move, shimmy my table over a bit. This is Jeremy Pickett's house. He is, from what we understand, um, he lives a solitary life. There are two people you can talk to. Jeremy himself, who is in his house, and Constable Fordern. Constable Fordern is basically there to act as your supervisor. He can give you information such as public knowledge, things that the police would know. He's actually with the police force. Um, he They called us in um, simply because uh, the police, they're kind of, they're currently a bit overwhelmed. Um, so, at any point, you can talk to either Jeremy or the constable, and you can explore different points on the map. There are many different points of interest here, from like tables, pianos, trees, anything you want, you guys can look into and explore. And once you do, the Chi will usually present some form of puzzle or some sort of way to interact with the world in a way that'll unravel this mystery. Now, without further ado, we are about to start Operation, Operation Lost Cat. You want to check the dead tree? Yeah, this is some appropriate mystery music. Okay, so the chat decides to check the tree. The class approaches the tree. For some reason, all the other trees in the garden seem to be full of life, vibrant. Uh, they seem to have been well kept, even. Something... Something seems a bit off about this tree. Well, for one, it's dead. But something seems to draw you closer. Something seems to pull you in. You place your hand. One of you places your hand on the tree. And suddenly an emblem glows on the back of your hand. It... It seems to be a strange shape. A star of sorts. Elven lied, should I be scared? <laughs> bonus points for Chase. Chase gets bonus points. <laughs> Suddenly, a beam of light shoots up from your hand. And the four trees, starting from here. And keep in mind, you guys are going to need to take this, this down. Because I'm going to only mention it once, maybe twice, if I'm feeling generous. The number 12 appears on the first tree. The number 9 appears... On the second tree, the number six on the third, and then the fourth tree, the number five. Now, because I'm feeling generous, that was 12, 9, 6, and 5. And this is called, and this puzzle is simply called. The tree of knowledge. All right, I'm back. You got it? You got it? So can we check each tree in order of ascending numbers? Corresponds to a letter in the alphabet? Life. The moment you say that, your hand begins to glow. Your hand glows. And as you... And it almost... Your hands almost pull towards the tree. The strange symbol on your hand glows even more and... Suddenly the squiggles almost seem to change shape, change form, and they spell out the words, the letters L-I-F-E, life. Suddenly, you guys hear some footsteps coming from behind you. 
a man in his early 40s stumbles towards you guys. He seems to be quite worse for wear, quite ragged. Um, his hair, most of it's gone. He's got He's got some hair on the sides of his head. Um, he has a rather scruffy beard. Um, he wears the remains of what was a leather jacket and has a white t-shirt inside and some tattered jeans. He says, Oh, who are you? What do you think? She's a beauty, isn't she? This tree? My name is... <laughs> Might as well introduce myself. I'm Jeremy. Jeremy Pickett. I'm the owner. The proud owner of this, this tree. Co-owner, technically. You see. <laughs> this is... Me and my wife's prized chestnut tree. Isn't she a beaut? The biggest, brightest thing you'll ever see. It's won awards, this tree. Did you know that? Many awards. We called it the tree of life. What happened to this tree? Why is it withered? It's not withered. I don't know what you're talking about. He looks up the tree. Do you not see how healthy it is? How beautiful it is? There's... Look Look at those powerful branches covered head to toe in jade foliage. I tend to this tree every day, you know. I don't take too kindly to people who would insult my hard work, he says, with his expression turning slightly, slightly dark, but he tries to hide it, to the best of his ability. My apologies, my glass. No problem at all. As long as you guys are here, and you guys are not posing any threat to myself and my tree. Huh? <gasps> Wait a minute. Are you the? Are you the? Are you here to help me find my cat? Mister Sniffles is what we call him. Come in, come in. As he, he he notices the constables who's keeping his distance. He's leaning against the tree right here, and he invites you into his home. You walk in. You guys notice a strange bowl outside the house. You notice a table with some food prepared on it. You notice what looks like a piano. You see a fireplace and a doorway leading into what you assume is his bedroom. He sits you down. He explains that his cat's been missing for about two days. And he wishes you all the best. He tells you that his cat never leaves the house. His cat hardly ever, you know, he'll go out, use the bathroom, usually come back. He was very much a house cat, very much happy to be a house cat. So it's strange that the cat would leave his home. Jeremy scratches his head. What does the cat look like, Mr. Mr. Sniffles? Um, 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 I, I believe he had gray, no, white, no, orange, orange fur, and he had small, no, 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 big, big eyes, yellow, he, yes, I remember, he was about yay big. Oh, forgive my memory. Forgive my memory. <laughs> it's almost funny. It's only been a few days. He says, I've given you all the information I can for now. Feel free to look around. I'm sure. I'm sure. You guys will find something. He says as he, he suddenly begins to hold his head. And he sort of hobbles, hobbles, uh, hobbles over to the sofa over here. Where he takes a seat, burying his hands in his head. 
or his head in his hands. Inspect the chair near the piano. You guys walk towards the chair. Um, you begin to examine it. Ow. Ow. <laughs> okay, you begin to examine it. It... Something seems very strange. Um, the, yes, the chair is broken, but there also seems to be a large dent in the floor. The legs seem to almost have been broken off. It's almost as if someone lifted the chair up and slammed it into the ground. However, upon closer inspection, you see under the chair, once again, almost scraped in in a manner quite similar to what was on the tree. Not scribbles. Um, a very, very faint marks. However, upon putting the mark on your hands, because everyone at this point, this glowing star-shaped mark has appeared on the back of their hands. Upon placing it over the chair, the markings underneath begin to glow. And suddenly, you see sheet, sheet music. Upon, upon this sheet music, I'm being highlighted and glowing. Jeremy walks towards you guys and says, Oh yes, this old song. I can't seem to remember what it's called, he says looking at the chair, or how it even got down there. But it looks like... Hmm, what was it called again? Perhaps you can help jog my memory. He suddenly stands up, gently pushes away the chair, and he begins, he walks, he stands in front of the piano. The piano, you notice, in contrast to the rather shabby surroundings, looks like a rather well-maintained one. It, everything else in the house seems to be tattered and torn, but this piano is being taken care of. And he begins to play this simple tune as he looks to you for guidance to help jog his memory of sorts he says forgive me uh, i can't really play this at full speed welcome welcome daryl we're currently on an adventure Um, Jeremy turns around his head he's still playing and he says full metal alchemist that sounds familiar I think you're onto something now here let me try a little bit faster he says with a smile something light begins to almost illuminate his face as he um as he, he begins to reminisce of a time long forgotten. And he... He says, but I need the name of the song. He says, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't, I can't, I can't remember. He says, as he, tears begin to trickle from his eyes, as he just begins to play frantically on his piano. His hands just taking over. This song is period, by chemistry. It was an opening for Full Metal Alchemist. Ah, oh, I remember it well. Ah, yes. This is the song we used to listen to as kids. Annabelle, my wife, and I. I've been practicing it every day, so I can surprise her when she gets home for our anniversary. Thank you so much for reminding me. I must have forgotten. Thank you. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. <laughs> it's funny. 
and you, as he's talking, you you see life begin to fill his bones. Yeah, you googled it. <laughs> I should. I, oh well. Oh well. I knew you guys would get it. And he said, you know, life begins to flood back into him. He says, to think, people who I called to help me find my beloved cat would also help me. Would also help me find. And he's, he goes silent and returns to his sofa. Neff's here. The gang's all here. The pieces have fallen into place. Currently, the gang is questioning the constable outside, asking for information about Jeremy Pickett. Jeremy Pickett has lost his cat. And it's up to you all to find it. Can we ask the constable who Annabelle is? Of course. Of course you may. So, you want, you want to know who the cat is? I'm not the cat, sorry. Who Annabelle is? Annabelle is... That's... That's Jeremy's late wife. She passed away... About five years ago. Terrible tragedy, really. The man's never fully recovered. I do hope he's okay. I try not to touch on it. It tends to, um... Aggravate him. And I'd suggest you avoid bringing up her demise too. Lest we get kicked out of here prematurely. Think of the cat. The cat? Oh, well, the cat. He's been missing for weeks. Um, Jeremy has been constantly, constantly, constantly bugging us about this when, honestly, we've got better things to be doing. He points you guys to the little cat bowl outside the door. You guys see inside the remains of what looked like cat food that's been left out for weeks and weeks and weeks. Almost so bad that it's it's almost so festered and rotten that everything that was growing on it is almost dead. As you're looking around the garden, you lift you, you lift your hand up. The strange star-shaped mark on the back of your hands lights up, almost like a metal detector. It glows eerily in the... At this point, it's tw it's almost a twilight. This is the symbol that's on your hand, by the, by the way, you guys. This symbol right here. And eventually, you get to the point where the symbol is glowing so brightly that you see... What looks like freshly disturbed dirt. Not fresh, but fresh enough that um, it stands out upon closer inspection. Oh yes, I forgot to also mention that the trap door is locked. And the Sora... So, trap door... Locked until mystery comes closer. Or the until. Until the truth is in your grasp. Sounds like a grave? Well, without being too morbid, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? And also, Neff, what did you have for dinner? <laughs> Sorry if that sounds rather ominous when I'm talking in this tone. <laughs> also, I will say that you guys are there as a class. I'm not there personally. Time to dig, Ikuzo. I'm making chicken makbuz. I have no idea what that is. I will be perfectly honest with you. So, you guys, as you're about to start digging with your hands, the glow, the symbol glows on your hand once more. And you focus, and it seems to tell you and guide you. And slowly, dirt begins to lift up in clumps. 
placed around. Almost as if an invisible force is digging for you. And inside you find... <laughs> Mac booze. Inside you find what looks like a skeleton. A skeleton of a cat. However, something's off. It seems to be missing a few parts. It seems to also be very dismembered. Sorry uh, about me describing this rather gruesome sight. I will put a disclaimer. Gore, there's, no, there's not much gore. Um, but I tend to be very... Um, very... Descriptive. Descriptive. You guys are... You guys are reaching the end of the story. Uh, you guys are getting to the end of this this mystery. You guys are... You guys suddenly hear a shout from inside the house. Help! Help! Someone! Please! Please! Quick! 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 The class runs into the house, bursting through the doors to see Jeremy trembling. He's on his sofa. He's looking into his room. He says, something ran in there. Something big. I don't know what it is. It wasn't my cat. It wasn't my cat. Please, please, you, you're you all magic students, right? Um, the constable told me. Could you please? Suddenly, as the, um, as you guys pull the, um, pull out the, the clothes from, from the pile, what looks like a large, a large, almost mutated rat leaps out from the clothes, bears its fangs, it hisses at you all. It goes, ah. as it as it looks towards all of you, ready to strike. Suddenly, the glow on your hands, the the symbol on your hands begins to glow once more, and time seems to freeze for a split second. You suddenly hear Frey's voice. Hey guys, hey, 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 hey everyone, can you hear me? Um, so, I just sense a disturbance. Uh, it seems you guys have just entered battle. Um, ooh, I wasn't planning on that. Are you sure you guys are just, are, are, are you sure you guys went to the right place? You're still looking for a dead cat, right? Or not a dead cat, sorry. Um, a, like, um, a lost cat. Uh, yeah, I should probably explain this. Sorry for throwing this on you guys. <laughs> combat with the magic that I provided for you, the, the sort of protection magic, works as follows. Your, the symbol on your hand is known as a mark of Sora. And when danger is, when danger presents itself, it'll, it'll give you guys time and highlight weaknesses in the creature. Most creatures, especially if they are magically magically enhanced, will have very subtle weaknesses. The Sora will do its best to tell you what those weaknesses are or where sh you should aim. And yes, aim. The, um, the Sora. The Sora mark. If you guys can solve it, well then, victory is yours. Um, if you don't, um, good luck. I'll do my best. I'll be right over there. I'll I'm actually tell you what. I'm going. I'm going to head there right now. You guys just do your best and hold out what you can. You'll also be able to see how many hits it'll take to defeat the creature. Good luck, class. And you guys see that the mark. You guys see on the creature. There's simply a number one above its head. Which you guys assume means that in one hit, you guys assume that it will die in one hit. So, as soon as you scan the, the rat, a voice in your head repeats the following haiku. Boy with pink hair, one of five sent from the past, can consume hot fire. 
that haiku and like echoes around your noggins it it's trying to tell you it's trying to highlight a body part to target as soon as as soon as josh says that his hand seems to the glow the the mark on his hand seems to grow and change shape into what looks like a sword and suddenly adrenaline fills his lungs as he lunges forward slashing at the rat's tail as soon as he does he he hits what feels like a gem and there's a little bit of resistance before <coughs> the gem within is smashed in half it flies the crystal that was split into two parts flies out of the tail and hits the wall the rat hisses <laughs> and sort of shrivels up before before crumbling into ash. As you guys exit the, the area to the trapdoor, you see that a key is needed. However, you've braced everything you've, you've uncovered. You haven't left a single stone unturned. You know that this key is within your grasp. The door, you hover your hand over it, and the mark, your Sora mark, glows. And the following, the, of, the voice returns and says, This puzzle will be most likely the most challenging yet. Should you need to, there are four hints remaining. But the answer lies within the house that you came from within the house search for search for the key and what happens next is that the glow seems to shine through your hand shines on the trap door and the following images appear on the door you see a small dog Followed by a pig, followed by a rat, followed by an ox. All in this exact order. Dog, pig, rat, ox. As soon as, as soon as Josh says that, you see these appear. Dog, pig, rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster. The Chinese Zodiac appears. But what could this mean? What could a Chinese Zodiac have to do with anything in that house? Perhaps... Perhaps it's trying to give you a hint. Upon walking in, you look and you see that... You see that Jeremy has retreated to his room and shut the door. So you're able to walk in and check the fruit basket. You rummage through, and within you find a large bronze key and you take it back to the trapdoor click it's unlocked and you lift up the trapdoor and you see cold stone stairs Heading down into a dark basement. Would you guys like to enter? If this were a game, this would be the point where I would ask you guys to save. <laughs> the following words echo in your head as you look into the basement. The case is coming to a close, for the answer is but under your nose, for, for it is within this basement that you will see that there's more life than glee and sadness, there's sorrow, there's hurt. You guys enter the basement and see what looks like strange vials strange strange potions concoctions pipes pipettes 
a foul odor emanates, permeates the surroundings. It clings to your nostrils. It, it almost causes you to cringe and reel as you, every tape, every step you take towards the goal only causes this, this, this musk to grow in viscosity till it's almost, your body is almost fighting for you to turn back. And as soon as you reach, as soon as you reach the end of the hallway, you see a large object glowing green with a large, a large cloth draped over it. Surrounding it, there seems to be vials, bottles, jars filled with what looks like remains. Things no human should ever have to witness. Scribed onto a table next to you. These words. These words are written. Humankind cannot gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy's first law, equivalent exchange. As you guys pull the cloth away, you see what looks like a human figure. You can't see inside because the... <laughs> this human figure is masked. They're contained within a large glass tube. There seems to be an ominous green liquid. Very op um, not very opaque. It seems to be, or yeah, it is a very opaque liquid. It's green. It glows green. And suddenly, suddenly, you hear a crack, 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 crack. A voice from behind you laughs maniacally. <laughs> She's back. You guys are here. You guys are here to witness the return of my wife, the return of my sweet animal. Suddenly the tube shatters, coating the students in fragments of glass. Splash! The water within the tube crashes onto the stone floor below. As the figure within floats eerily towards the glass. At first, it simply resembled a young woman. Eyelids shut, ghostly pale skin, wearing a loose silk gown. Her long, fair hair gently floating behind her as she approached you all. <laughs> Suddenly, its eyes open, revealing bright yellow cat-like pupils. I have a donor card. <clears throat> its mouth opens and, and hyper extends it lets out a shrill feline cry <laughs> as it hunches forwards almost in agony before its back erupts releasing what look like large angelic but tattered wings as it begins to flap them softly hovering gently over the ground he Jeremy pushes through the class and runs towards the figure. Finally, she's returned to me. Annabelle. But as soon as he does, she looks at him. Her eyes glow with an eerie yellow, yellow light. Before she lifts up her hand. And with almost superhuman strength, it collides with his ribs. You hear a loud crack as he's flung across the room, hitting the door. Or not hitting the door, sorry. Hitting the wall, crashing onto the table. <laughs> Vials and bottles break as he looks up. Adam, why? As he falls down. The class looks at her. Suddenly, your, um, suddenly your chi marks begin to glow. Your Sora marks begin to glow. Boss music! The moment, the moment its eyes make contact with you, the moment you see it, the moment it sees you, time begins to slow. Time begins... Her movements are slow, but you notice that she is incredibly fast. She is... She runs... She seems to be walking towards you in slow motion. 
suddenly of the voice in your head says, Quick! The weak spot! You hear another haiku. Known as the Flame Haze, contract with the Flame of Heaven at Sun Sun Dere Dere. This haiku echoes through your head as the, as the character walks towards you. You have exactly one minute until it'll reach you. Haha! <laughs> Ariel quickly turns to the class. She recognizes the she recognizes the haiku instantly. She recognizes the Shana. Shana, but what could Shana mean? What could that mean? Where could this weak spot lie? The moment the moment Ariel realizes this, her the mark on her hand begins to glow and form into what looks like a large crystalline bow. Um, instinct takes over, she draws it back as an as an arrow of pure energy begins to form. Aims, pulls, aims, fires. It flies through the air. Whoosh, and right in between the eyes of the creature. Suddenly, time resumes. <laughs> the creature, the creature hisses, recoils from the pain, and looks, its eyes bleeding, but disabled. It seems to grow angry. However, you've definitely damaged it. The number four appears on its head before suddenly dropping to a three. Three HP. You have to hit this thing three more times. Suddenly, it lunges towards you guys, even closer this time. It's only 40 seconds away. But time slows. Suddenly, the, this haiku um, breaks the silence in your head. One who camps solo, four girls who camp in a group. A very wholesome show. This haiku echoes through your minds. What could this be referring to? Where is the next weak spot? What does this have to do with the girls? What does it have to do with laid back camp? The moment Chase says this, his, his mark lights up um, and forms into what looks like a large crescent-shaped blade. Adrenaline once again takes over as he runs towards the creature. Time resumes in full speed. He's, the creature goes and tries to swipe him. He slides underneath, underneath the claw, grabs onto, grabs onto the creature's leg and pulls up, plunging the crescent, the crescent blade that extends from, his, from the back of his wrist right into the back of the creature. The creature howls in pain. <laughs> And it sort of stumbles forward. It gra it reaches back, grabs Chase, and throws him back to the class. However, it looks at you. It's now... It seems to be oozing a strange black liquid all across its body. It takes a step towards you. Before you see the muscle in its leg tense, it pushes off the ground. Its wings spread out into the air as it soars towards you again to take one more slash. This time it's only 30 seconds away. The following haiku echoes through, the, um, through your minds. In purgatory, to help stuck people move on, an angel who hunts. What could this haiku mean? It's more cryptic than the last. What could this be referring to? The moment Daryl says this, his, his, um, what looks like two, his, uh, what do you call it? His, his mark lights up as two kunai blades appear on his hands. He runs towards it. He runs towards the creature, leaping over it as it soars. Guard skill, hand sonic. <laughs> he, he leaps over it and throws the two blades into the, into the wings of the creature as it, as it winces in pain. <sighs> It hits the ground with a thud as Daryl um, is able to land and quickly get back around the front of the room with the class. You guys, you all stand back as the creature, the creature's HP takes down to one. One hit is all it will take to kill this creature. However, it stands up. Its once angelic form seems to peel away. It's almost its skin begins to break away almost as if it was made of porcelain more and more pieces fall off until all of its skin has broken off revealing a creature almost almost mummy like in 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 um in appearance it seems to shapes seem to glow all around it from within inside, from inside different gemstones of different, um, 
different shapes and sizes. Some in the shape of triangles, some in the, or some in the shapes of pyramids, some in the shapes of cubes, some cuboids. They begin to light up within. You all suddenly remember the rat. The rat that you guys fought with um, upstairs had a weak spot, a singular crystalline structure. However, the voice in your Sora warns you. It says, the power that it radiates is unstable. The vessel is beginning to implode. If you hit the wrong gem, you could cause, cause an explosion on nuclear level. It could level the city. No, it could level this entire island. Suddenly, the high cube breaks through, breaks through its, um, its own concerned voice and says, Sent from the future to save the past's idols, send them all your love. What could this be referring to? I'm going to give you guys the ultimate hint. You guys have said the answer multiple, multiple times, but I need you guys to clarify what that answer means. You guys have said the answer. Uh, one, oh wait, where's my mouse? One, two, three. Wait, wait, wait. The moment, <laughs> the moment Daryl says this, his, his, his mark begins to glow and grow as a large cannon-like object appears. The entire class's arm, um, marks begin to glow as they place their hand on the cannon. Suddenly a beam begins to swirl around and concentrate. And suddenly the, the, um, what looked like a large ball of, ball of energy at the tip of the cannon condenses into a tiny, almost, almost tennis ball sized condensed sheer sphere of plasma it shoots out before before hitting the creature straight in the chest where the prism shaped gem lay the moment it does a shockwave is sent out across the room rattling rattling all the surroundings before the shockwave implodes, and suddenly you're a k k k k k k k k <laughs> There's an explosion. Controlled explosion, but an explosion nonetheless. It sends ripples throughout the room. It shakes the house above. The 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 class struggles to to to, to maintain their balance. The creature at the center of the explosion has been reduced to just a shining ball of light, emanating shockwave after shockwave of energy as each crystal bursts and bursts, but releases only a fragment of the energy they, that it once contained. By the end of, by the end of this explosion, all that's left is a single pile of ash. And on top of it, what looks like a gold ring. A few moments later, the class is above. Back at the start. Back at the start of the house. Frey is waiting for them. Frey is waiting for them, covered in sweat. He has just run all the way from the school. Gotten the train. Call an ambulance, but not for us, indeed. The constable is waiting for him. He, there seems to be an ambulance behind him as they 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 seem to they lift a man who's who you guys recognize as Jeremy he's an honest stretcher but his hands seem to be handcuffs handcuffed the constable looks at you guys and says it goes without saying uh, what he's done here regardless of the reason was incredibly illegal but he's going to be locked away for a long, long time. But what you've done here, you've done us a great service. Had that thing been released into the world, God knows what the casualties would have been like. And as the ambulance drives away, Frey looks at the class with a slightly uh, 
smug smile on his face. You guys once asked me what it means to be a magical student, what it means to be a magical teacher. Jeremy's wife was killed when a Gaia, a creature of magic, a creature of raw magic, entered the city and attacked. What does it mean to be a student of the magical arts? As I mentioned before, what is magic? What, mag what is magic to you is merely a science to me. The true magic. This is it. This is it. It's not for us. It's never for us. This man tried to do the unthinkable. But the unthinkable is birthed only from pain. The true magic happens when we do our part to make sure no one ever has to feel like they have to suffer alone. That people like us who can have their back have their back. And that we learn from their stories and grow stronger. Strong enough to point people in the dire right direction with even just our actions. So that they never end up where this man did. <laughs> well done, class. What do you mean? You guys are looking at me as if I knew all this was going to happen. You guys, I didn't know anything. I just sent you guys on a mission to find Lost Cat. And you found it. So, in my book, you guys get an A+. Well done, class. Mission success. <laughs>